Hey everybody, with everything going on in the world today, I just, I don't even have a lot of words, honestly, and it feels really silly to just be talking about how to be more productive when the world's kind of burning down around you. So this week's video, I actually figured out some ways to make my productivity tools um, bring me joy and peace and help me find ways to productively cope with everything that's going on. And so this week's video is not necessarily about how to be more productive, but it's about how I'm using Trello and Pixie Bricks to actually help me when I'm struggling and to give me ways to relax and kind of self-care and also give me tangible action items that I can do. So I'm going to show you what it is and how you can set it up and I hope you find it useful and if you need anything at all, even like if it's not productivity related, please feel free to comment on my video, reach out to me, DM me on Twitter. Um, my DMs are open and I would love to be there for you in these trying times. So hope this video is helpful and uh, yeah, let's dive right in. All right, so first I'm just going to demo what it does. And so basically I'm using Pixie Bricks. So when I do Command K on my keyboard, it opens up this panel that has all sorts of things that I do in Pixie Bricks. First one, I called it, it's going to be okay. So when I hit it, notice there's a pop-up with two things in it. And then you'll see a few other things happen, bada boom, an action link. And so just to break down what's actually happening is I have it sped up a bit because I'm a fast reader and I want it to move quickly, but that pop-up, was showing two different things. It was showing one, something relaxing and self-care that I can do. And the second thing was something like actually productive that I can do with my feelings. So when I'm feeling stressed and I'm just like, okay, the world is going to hell in a handbasket right now, um, literally just falling apart. Um, I get a little overwhelmed with it, right? Reasonably so, we all do. And so it's a good reminder for, hey, here's something to do, take a deep breath. And then here's something I can do to like actually be productive and help with the Hope with the situation rather than just kind of sit and you know wallow and so anyways i built it with trello and pixie bricks and it all starts in this trello board i just called it gonna be okay and i have two main lists in here i have a self-care list where each card is a different thing i can do like watch parks and rec journal nap whatever various things in here and then I have a list of productive things. And so this is mostly contacting senators and just different Congress people, donating to causes, um, things like that. And in each of these productive items, there's an attachment with one link to it. And that is the link where I can go to take the action. So you'll see why that's important here in a second, but that's where it all starts. And then I use Pixie Bricks to actually put all the magic together to make it all do what you just saw. So open up Pixie Bricks and I added a quick bar. So it's, it starts with a quick bar. I called it, it's gonna be okay. You can call it whatever you want, have all the context. I have it enabled on all URLs. So no matter where I'm at, I can open that uh, quick bar to show that option. So it's right there. I can select an icon. I have it just as the default one at this point. And then next, I'm going to use the Trello Get Cards Brick. And what that is going to do is it's going to let me provide a board ID, and then it will return an object with all the Trello cards. So if you've never gotten your Trello board ID before, it's pretty easy. Just take the URL, bleh, take the URL of the board and then put .json at the end. And give it a second. It's going to look really terrifying if you've never seen this before, but it's going to be okay. You just need this right here. This is your board ID right up at the top, right after it says ID. So just copy that value and you're going to paste it in here in board ID. I'm going to go ahead and run the action just because I want you to see what we get from it. So um, there was the pop up again, by the way, if you see it right there. And this is what we get from it. So I can see a list. Uh, Trello, it basically is getting an array of cards, an array of lists. I'm interested in these cards and it groups them actually quite nicely by list. So this is actually the productive list and this is the self-care list. And so each of these items in here is a Trello card with all sorts of details about them. I am most interested in the URL and the name. So we'll come back to that in a second. That's all we need from that. And then next, you need to add the random number. I think it was just a random number. Gen yeah, re I renamed it to make it a little more clear, but I think it was just like random, yeah, random number brick. So, so what you want in there, you just design or define the base and the 
ceiling. So basically, I want it to be anything between zero and the length of how many cards there are. So if you are a programmer, this will look familiar. If you're not, uh, feel free to just copy and paste this. I'll provide all the links. But basically what I'm saying is, hey, go into that object we just got, look at the cards in, remember that there was that section of one here. I'm saying however many items there are in here, and there happens to be five. But if I could just put the number five here, but I wanted to future proof it because I want to add more things in here. And I don't want to have to go update this every time I do. So if I add 10 more cards in here, it'll know that is 10 or well, I guess technically 15 at that point, but it will know the length of them. So I do that. And then I renamed the output to random care. And then basically I copied it and did the exact same thing, which by the way, if you didn't know, you can copy a brick, you can while you've got it selected, hit this copy, and then it'll you'll see these paste icons, and you can just kind of paste it in there, just like that. So I actually don't need that, so I'm going to delete that. But so yeah, random number care, and then copy that, and then you want it to look exactly the same. The only thing you're changing is you're looking at the zero list instead of the one list, and I call that random productive. And so you'll see this is output as a random number. Yeah, four for one, and then four actually for the other one. So. Next, you want to add the JQ JSON processor brick. And again, stick with me. This is a little bit, if you're not a programmer, you're like, this makes no sense. Just copy and paste this. But if you are a programmer, you'll probably understand what we're saying here is, hey, I'm giving you some, some items here. Go look through them, find that array of cards, use that random number, and then grab the name of that, that nth item in the list. So down here for the data, I'm passing it an object of two things. I'm giving it data itself, which is at transform, which references those Trello cards up here. And then I'm also giving it a random number, which references this random care dot value. And you can just copy and paste this. I'm literally saying, hey, go through that array, use, you know, find the fourth card and get the name of it. And you can see it actually returns it right here. And then I'm copying that brick again and doing basically the same thing. The only thing I'm changing is putting that at zero, where it goes and looks through that productive list instead of the self-care list. And also make sure you're referencing the random productive value and not the random care value. But those are the only things you should need to change. I also changed the output from value productive, value care up here. So just to get it easier to, to notice what I'm getting, Copy it one more time, and we're going to use the JQJSON processor brick to get the productive link. We want the URL of that Trello card, and you'll see why in a second. It looks exactly like the one prior to it, like same things down here, same for data and RAND. The only difference is we're saying URL instead of name. So just change that, and you might want to change the output to something like link productive, so you can reference it in a minute. All right, so we've got everything we need. We basically have the names of these two things. We've got the link that we need for the Trello card. Now we've just got to show it and do things with it. So next you're going to add a brick. You're going to add the window alert brick. And once again, you can copy and paste this, but I'm literally just referencing the variables of the names basically of, you know, what is the thing I want to do for care? What is the thing I want to do for productive? Basically what we got from these guys. And I just use this to put a little break in between them. You can edit the duration here if you want it to stay up a little longer. I intentionally have it moving pretty fast because I want to read it, but I also want to go on to the action item, which we're going to configure next. And then I add the wait sleep brick. And what that does is it literally just says, hey, before you do the next steps on this, just wait this amount of time. And I wanted to do that because I want it to give me give me time to read what's popped up, but not too much time to just sit there and like chipboard. So it basically waits 300 or 3000 milliseconds before it does the next thing. And then I added the open a new tab brick. And this is where I referenced that link productive that I got for the Trello card. So basically I'm referencing what I grab here, which is where I get the URL of the Trello card that I'm saying, so, you know, for instance, let's say the action was contact John Kennedy. Well, this is getting the link of that exact Trello card and it's opening it in a new tab. So next you want to add the wait for a DOM element brick and two important things to note here. One, before I forget, you all, you want to change the target down here in advanced options to target tab, because otherwise it's going to do it in whatever tab you were in where you called the action. And we don't want it to do that. Uh, we want it to go to the tab that we just told you to open and do this action. And what we're going to do is just so you can see how this works. 
what I'm literally making Pixie Bricks do is actually go in this card and click this link for me. So I'm telling it to go to this link and then I'm using the selector to select this whole little box here that is the first attachment. And if there were multiple attachments, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know how this would behave, but I just have one for each card. And so it wor it's worked pretty nicely so far. So you can copy and paste this or use the selector and grab it yourself. Make sure again, this is on target tab. And we wanna wait for that to load because we'll, the next action we're gonna tell it to click it, but we need to make sure it's actually there. Otherwise Pixie Bricks will go to click it and be like, there's nothing there and just move on. So now add the simulated DOM event brick. And once again, the exact same selector, because we said, hey, wait for it here. And now we're saying once it shows up, just go click it. So select that for the event. Once again, make sure target tab is set to target tab. And then lastly, we want to close the browser tab. And this is actually going to close this Trello card. So that way you don't have a random Trello card up in your browser and it just goes straight to whatever the action is that you want it to do. So that's exactly how it all works. And I hope that makes sense. If you have any other ideas or other ways you want to try to use technology to help you cope in these trying times, let me know. And I'm happy to try and build something. Thank you.